Hey everyone, I wanted to do a video on something that's really, really important to me and it's homeschooling. And I actually asked you guys for some uh, questions that you had about homeschooling or uh, actually had some veteran homeschool moms who just posed some questions to me that they have gotten from other people a lot. And let me just preface this by saying that the current situation in our world um, has given way to lots of misconceptions about homeschooling and um, the way that the public school children were having to do remote learning or they were given work to do from home um, at the end of last semester um, absolutely 100% is not indicative of a typical homeschool. So um, I just want to throw that out there and clear that up right away. Um, you know, I've had lots of people, I've actually gotten into some discussions with people about how, you know, these, these parents that had never homeschooled before were thrown into this remote learning thing at the end of last year and probably are going to continue doing that this year. And they're like, we will never homeschool our kids. We hate homeschooling and stuff. Well, let me tell you, that's not that's not what homeschooling is. So you can just forget that right there. Maybe you aren't called to homeschool, and that's you know that's you're right, and that's fine. Um, but as far as calling it homeschooling, that's not what homeschooling is. So, um, and then also I've gotten some questions from some people who have wanted my advice on um, starting back this semester doing the remote learning with their kids um, doing things a curriculum that is given to them from the school system the requirements of the school system and all that I don't have a clue I don't have a clue about that so I'm, I'm sorry I'm not very good uh, at giving advice about remote learning what I am good at is giving advice about homeschooling and um, I don't have all the answers by any means but we're going into our seventh year of homeschooling and we love it more and more every single year so uh, not to say it's easy by any means it is one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do um, or been called to do because I do believe it's a calling but it uh, has been just the greatest joy and um, I I spent last fall uh, on a weekend retreat with some other homeschool moms who uh, are veteran. A lot of them were veteran moms who have graduated their children already, and they were just there to to support us younger moms that are homeschooling and to hear their stories of you know walking their kids across a platform at graduation and just the joy just the feeling of accomplishment just the feeling of just overwhelming emotion I can imagine to have seen this thing through all the way to completion and I like I don't want to rush time but I know that when that day comes like me and my kids are gonna look back and be like wow look what we've done you know look at the relationship that we have look at what um, the Lord has brought us through because things are hard sometimes um, and look at all we've learned over the past so and so years so um, anyways so all that to say homeschooling is a journey and I believe with all my heart that the reason why I in particular was called to homeschool my children um, was because God wanted to deepen the relationships I had with my kids and um, I fought homeschooling many of you might not know that Adam and I actually disagreed about homeschooling our kids when Sydney was real young um, I <laughs> it, it sounds crazy now to say it this way but I really was looking forward to her being school age uh, even though I had left my job to come home and be home with her, but 
anyone who has small children knows that sometimes when they're that little you feel like you're just babysitting all day and you enjoy the time with them but you just feel like I'm my hands are just so tied right now like I can't get any cleaning done because they mess up what I clean or I'm holding a baby all day so I can't do anything else so you do feel like you're just babysitting but let me tell you when when Sydney was little I thought hey when she's school age I'm going to send her to public school so I can actually like clean my house so I can actually get some things done so I can read a book so I can watch TV so I can you know all these things that was so selfish of me that I wanted to do um, thinking that was gonna sending her to home sending her to public school was going to uh, free me up a lot so when Adam and I started talking about homeschooling you can imagine my disappointment my surprise when he said I really feel like God wants us to homeschool and at that time he was working like 60 plus hours a week at his job and I was like you mean me me homeschool so it was a little bit of a, a pain point for us and something that we had to work through but as we prayed together about it and talked about the reasons why we would and why we would not um, it became overwhelmingly clear that we were supposed to homeschool so when I started um, and I hope that this will give you a little bit of hope also and some encouragement because when I started because I was raised in the public school system I thought that homeschool was basically public school done at home and um, let me be the first to tell you if no one else has that that is such a lie that that is probably the biggest mistake biggest hindrance for you having a good successful homeschool environment is to try to make it look like your public school experience at home um i would i would have all these worksheets for sydney to do all these worksheets all this busy work and I would expect her to have this completed every day. I mean, she's four years old, you know. Um, I would ha expect her to finish an entire math lesson. I don't care if we sat there for two hours working on one math lesson, we were gonna work on it. She was four years old, four years old. And I was making her sit down and do all of this busy work and she hated it and I hated it we both hated school we both were like why in the world are we putting ourselves through this torture thankfully the Lord put some very special people in my life who <laughs> when I told them that we would sit every day and we would get through that lesson and if we didn't get through that lesson we just sat there longer both of us would be in tears at the end of the day um, they looked at me and they said don't ever do that again you are going to ruin that child's idea of school and therefore set her up to fail and i was like well that's what we did in school i mean we had we had requirements you know we were supposed to sit there and do our worksheets and do this and do that and um and they were like but that's not gonna work that's not gonna work at home and that shouldn't work at home um public school is set up a lot differently than you and your child sitting together in a room and uh, if you've never experienced that before then you probably don't know what I'm talking about so I'll just let you experience that and then and then maybe you'll understand but when we started to relax when we started to really um, enjoy learning together we had that was that made all the difference we had so much fun and really every single year like I said it gets better and better so um, I just want to encourage you I actually have some books that I'd like to recommend to you and I'll link those down below um, the first one is called teaching from rest and it's uh, a very short book it won't take you long to read at all but it will encourage you it'll it'll um, prove to you that life is schooling um, that was one of the hardest realizations I think for me to come to was that me taking my kids to um, a park me taking my kids to a museum me taking the kids up 
um, in the woods and finding flowers and identifying them and drawing them all of these things were actually school um, they weren't extra they were school and we were all learning and we were all enjoying learning together um, so this book just lays that out there just about how um, you are to be teaching from rest you are to be teaching from a place of rest where you and your children not that you don't do anything because you do but it is restful it is not vigorous it is not um, it is not busy work it is not a hundred worksheets a day it is not sitting down with your nose in a textbook for four or five hours a day when you're four years old it just doesn't even make sense to me anymore to even think that way um, because I've experienced this for so long but that's a great book uh, there's another book called mere motherhood and it's so beautiful I love it I'm actually getting ready to reread that um, again and then I think I'd also I've never really recommended this before as far as homeschooling goes but I, I keep it keeps coming up to me so I feel like like I'm supposed to recommend this to you but there's a book by Pam Tebow called Ripple Effects and she's Tim Tebow's mom if you didn't know that and she uh, really lays out just how she raised her children in all the failings all the things that she thought she did wrong she homeschooled all of her kids as they were missionaries and um, how just very simple things that she did with her children and said to her children and made important to her children when they were young have greatly affected the adults that they are now and that's really what I wanted from my kids like when we started this I was like Lord just use me to help them to know you more help us to grow in relationship together and grow closer to you through this so uh, those are my recommendations for uh, books to read if you are a reader and you want to look into some things like that uh, let me get into the questions now So I had a few questions that were specific to North Carolina and since probably more than half um, of my viewers are actually not from North Carolina then I don't feel like it's necessarily appropriate to get into those but what I do want to recommend is the Homeschool Legal Defense Association and it's uh, hslda.org and this is a great national organization that lays out all of the requirements for each state very easy to see um, I actually didn't know about this website until fairly recently uh, but it, it's great for anywhere you are in the country to just look on there find your state find all the requirements for your state it just lays it out so easy and plain um, so that's the number one re website recommendation if you're wanting to know your specific state's requirements um also because i'm in north carolina and and i'm sure most states if not all states have the same equivalent of this but just looking for the um north carolina department of non-public education and you can just google that um whatever your state is the department of non-public education and you'll find a lot of the same things probably that you'll find on the homeschool legal defense page as well so I'm gonna to speak to what I know to be true for us in North Carolina um, but please double check to see if this is also the case in your state because I do know states vary um, what are the curriculum requirements in North Carolina there are not specific subject requirements uh, as as a mom who really wants her kids to have a well-rounded education I am responsible for what they learn what subjects they learn where we concentrate that kind of thing so I get to choose that um, and I do choose a very well-rounded curriculum how many hours are needed per day there are some great graphics that are floating around Facebook if you're on Facebook um, I'm sure you can find them if you just Google for Google them but 
like I said in the beginning, my school experience and what I tried to bring home to, to Sydney was not accurate. Uh, there is a lot of allowance in public schools for how many kids are in a classroom, how long it takes to transition to another activity, how long it takes to travel to another classroom. Um, uh, just a lot of things that have to be worked out, times for lunches. So that's why kids are there for eight hours a day or seven hours a day. Um, but for homeschool, you are not required to teach your kids for a certain number of hours a day. When they're really young, literally 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day is going to be sufficient for you to review letters with them or go over numbers or counting or phonograms or whatever, whatever they're on. And, um, that doesn't seem like a lot, but if you're doing this every day, you're repeating this, and then you're doing things throughout the day that just reiterate what you've been teaching them, you're gonna have no problem, and your kids are gonna have no problem. Um, as far as my kids go, personally, um, I would say Stella, she is almost seven, and she's doing about, I would say about an hour a day. Maybe not quite that much, but about an hour a day. Sydney, I would say she's doing probably three hours a day and she is, um, she's 10. And um, I don't know, it's hard to say because then we do extra stuff that we do as a group that's like, history and science and you know things like that that are done as a group as a family and and bible work and and things that we do so i don't really count that in but they're, her individual like this is her curriculum that she sits down with and she does some um writing and um all that kind of stuff then i would say that's about average for them travis he just got started with kindergarten work this year and he he would love to do work all day let me tell you the boy is excited about school but we do about 15 minutes with him um and like i said this is like formal like let's sit down and do some book work this is not like learning per se because we read books throughout the day we sing songs throughout the day we're always outside in nature we're researching things um, they they get to do art projects in their free time. Um, I mean, we're constantly schooling. So this is what I'm talking about is actual book work. Um, are there groups that we can join? Yes. <laughs> um, now there are co-ops available pretty much everywhere. Um, we actually have been in a co-op from the very beginning and actually uh, broke away and decided to do homeschool on our own last year. And that was just the right decision for our family. Didn't regret it. It was the best decision for us. Um, but that might not be the case for you. You might, you're, you and your child might need to be a part of a group, um, at least in the beginning, so that you have some support, no, um, that you have people that you can lean on for answers to questions or whatnot but um but yes there are groups available just search uh, most counties at least around us have like a homeschool group and you can ask them what are the different co-ops that are available in your community or whatever i'm not a teacher will my kids learn from me yes <laughs> i am so adamant about this point. Um, I have had so many people say, I could never teach my kids. And I think that is the biggest lie um, that we are believing. And I'm getting riled up. Just even thinking about it because Satan, like literally, Satan is keeping you in a place where you feel like you cannot 
be the best teacher for your kids. And I think that is absolutely a lie that we are believing and it needs to stop. It needs to stop. Blood pressure going up. Um, you can teach your children and I believe most parents are the very best teacher for their children. If you don't feel like you are qualified to teach your children, talk to me. Send me an email. Like, let's talk this out and find out why. Um, <clears throat> before I started homeschooling, I believe I, I had the same doubts about myself, even though I actually used to teach in public school. Um, a lot of you don't know that, but I used to actually teach pre-K in a public school setting. I was in a part of an elementary school where we were preparing them hard for kindergarten. We, I mean, we, we drilled it into these children. <laughs> like I look back and I'm like, oh no, why did I do that? Um, but I know you can teach your children. If you feel like you aren't smart enough, that's a lie. If you feel like other people will think you're not smart enough, that's probably true. Um, you will have people that don't believe you can do it or think that you need to have a master's degree in every single subject to teach your children. And that's a lie. Uh, and you just have to, you just have to ignore that. You have to ignore those voices. You have to ignore those people. Uh, it's going to come up, you know, um, I had people, I remember saying to me that they had faith in me to teach my kids because I had taught in public schools, like that prepared me for teaching my own kids. And like I said, that was a very big mistake. <laughs> so, um, so I don't think that is a valid, um, point. And I really believe that you can teach your children. Um, it is much easier to teach your children than I think you're thinking it is, honestly. Um, I'm horrible at blank subject. How in the world can I possibly teach it? Most homeschool curriculums are so extremely helpful to parents and students. You're learning together. You really are. Like, that's one thing I really love about homeschooling is because I swear the things that Sydney is learning in fourth grade are things that I never learned my entire school career. And I, that is no joke. I am not lying about that. Like I believe not that I just forgot it. I believe I did not learn it at all. And <clears throat> it's a miracle that I, <laughs> that I was like an A student and um in the top 10 of my class and stuff like that like how does that even happen um but there are many things that we that we're learning together and if you can't learn it with the subject with the uh, curriculum that you're given if you can't get it there are youtube videos everywhere for helping helping parents out with stuff like this or and or there are other moms who are teaching other dads that are teaching that can help you that excel in some area it's just like with me and adam adam excels more in math than i do and i excel more in language arts than he does and so if if we can't get it then we're going to refer the kid to the other parent and that's fine um there are also things like sylvan learning center if your kids need extra tutoring there are online tutors lots of help out there for you how should I choose a curriculum? <clears throat> you do not have to choose any curriculum if you don't want to. You can make your own curriculum. You can make your own. Um, so you can do a free curriculum. You can piece together things that you find online that are actually free. Um, but if you need, like me, if you need a little more guidance, a little more help, then there are massive amounts of curriculum. So how do you choose a curriculum? Now that's the hard part. You just have to decide if you want something that is more teacher led, more student led, online. You just go through and just figure out what it is that you want. Um, we've always done a teacher led curriculum. 
I've never sat my kids in front of a computer screen to learn anything. Uh, Sydney actually this year is going to start an online math curriculum and we're excited about that. Um, I think that's just a little different for her. She's getting to be at the age where she needs to be learning how to use the computer and how to um, you know how to be self-sufficient with that and so I think that will be helpful for her. How much does it cost? Like I said with curriculum it can be free or it can be very expensive. This year we are moving toward, more towards using um, this one curriculum that we really love called The Good and the Beautiful. And it is a pretty pricey curriculum. Uh, it's not the most expensive by any means, um, but it is, it is decently expensive. And you can, you can do bare bones or you can do like all the stuff that's printed out, um, all the extras that they recommend and all that if you want to. Um, many curriculums are just so um, lenient about what you want to use and how much you want to use. This goes back to the state requirements, but uh, so you need to check into your own state. But as far as North Carolina goes, North Carolina wants you to have a nine month school schedule. That does not mean you have to do nine consecutive months, um, but basically close to a hundred or recommended 180 days per school year. Um, you can do year-round school. A lot of people will do like six weeks on, um, a week off, or, or whatever. However, you whatever works for your family is what is best for your family, and, um, and it is okay. Um, there are different styles of homeschooling. There's unschooling, which is basically, I used to think that meant um, not doing school, and <laughs> it's not it means um that it's it's kid led so the kids are able to express interest in certain subjects or certain topics and then you are able to foster that and um, facilitate learning of that particular subject or that particular topic and then you move on to something else and um, it's really it's really good i mean i guess i guess we do a lot of that anyways, but that's kind of on top of what we, what we do as far as our traditional schooling, our, um, our subjects. We do traditional school subjects, um, but, but I have lots of friends that do unschooling also, and their kids really thrive with that too. Um, so there are lots and lots of questions uh, that I could continue to answer but I think this video is probably long enough um, if you have any specific questions that I did not answer then please uh, just put them in the comments here send me an email if you'd like to uh, but I'd like to have a discussion with you about the concerns that you have or the questions that you have and get those hopefully answered for you although I, like I said I'm not an expert I've just done this for um, seven years now and enjoyed it immensely and it's something that I'm really passionate about so all this to say you are a good teacher you can teach your kids and homeschooling is really really fun homeschooling is learning how to love learning in my opinion and it really has taught me to love learning again with my kids and my kids don't dread school it's not one of these things like when when kids come home from school and they're having to go do their homework and they're like oh mom do we have to it's not like that it doesn't have to be like that it shouldn't be like that schooling is fun homeschool is a blast i love it i can't imagine doing anything else um but that's my two cents and take it or leave it. But I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have not subscribed to our channel, I would ask you to subscribe now and hit the little bell button so that you can be notified every time that we have a new video. We do about three videos a week and uh, I'm just so excited to be here on this platform to get to talk to you guys and get to know you better as I read all of the comments and I read all the emails and um, we just love you guys. So thank you for watching and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.